Copyright disclaimer. Headphones got all rapunzeled. I'll tell you what I want to do with my logo, Mr. Demon. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill. This is Trying to Stand, where I try new things in pop culture, because I've been living under a rock. Today, I'm going back to uh, a first I did previously in the year. I'm going to be listening to more Lemon Demon for the first time. Uh, I had a really good time last time. It was a lot of fun, so I've been kind of waiting to follow up for when I just, I needed more fun and positive things. I'm stressed. Boy, what a blessing that is. So yeah, going to be listening to more. I took the most suggested songs from you guys in the comments and made this list. Thank you to those who are kind and supportive as well as leaving comments. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, the bell, check the settings, make sure they're set to all so you get all the notifications, blah, 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 YouTube words. And don't forget guys, there's a link to a card in the description that'll take you to resources for uh, social awareness as well as uh, mental health crisis lines, uh, Trevor Project resources, should you or someone you don't need them. I recently moved them to a card because they're a lot easier to manage that way, um, but they're still there, hanging out and listening to some uh, possessed fruit, possessed citrus. But yeah, uh, we're gonna be starting with Redesign Your Logo, which looks like it was a bonus track on on Spirit Phone. Oh, I also have a gaming channel, Build Chill Gaming. I'm done plugging my own stuff now, shall we? <laughs> Redesign your logo. Ooh, thank you, Cynthia. This is why I waited until I was stressed. Color makes us hungry. Everything's connected. Hello? If they fail to see it, are they even human? Jesus. Wait, wait, hold on. The, oh my god, that rocks, but this is terrifying. Men 18 to 30, college educated, women over 40. Those actually sounds like my demographics. <laughs> Thanks, YouTube. Xenophobes and racists. No, never mind. I don't want those. Every demographic. Ew, that's... I like how cold that felt. Like, do you really want that demographic? But I guess if you're like a big company, you don't care, right? Yes, yeah, this is scary as hell. They want my face and my fingerprint on my phone. <laughs> but the synthy bops though, but this is like terrifying. I'm part of your algorithm. No, this... <laughs> Stop bopping. I love the hooked into machine kind of vibe I'm getting. Like, holy crap, this is genuinely terrifying. This keeps me up. You did it. That's frightening, but like it really bopped. If this was just like going on, like on a speaker behind me, like on a playlist in the background while I'm doing stuff, I would absolutely bop out to this. But the second like the lyrics would start to creep into my brain, it's chilling and it's terrifying. And I kind of callously, I really love that because it, it, it creates such a like relaxing, comfortable, like, ooh, move. Ooh, do things. Like it's the right kind of simmering kind of energy for like productivity or background noise or something just to kind of bop to. Like just like advertising would be, right? Like it's it's enticing, even when they're talking about like color and all these things that they use and all the demographics they're gonna hit, even even awful ones. It kind of complements the the thesis really well, the story of the song, right? It's like a service that does it, sure. The purpose for the logo feels like grander and grander, and that's getting revealed further as we go. We're reaching billions of people. We want to entice everybody. And then there was something about like patriotism at one point, which made me think like, you know, when brands do like red, white, and blue for the summer, for July, at least here in the States, it even made me think about like the performative nature of, we'll be rainbow for 30 days in a month starting with J and ending with E and then donate to horrible people behind the scenes anyway or not do anything to help a community you know we'll support you in the shortest month of the year illuminating like how we can trick people with advertising and and almost omnipotent omnipotent, I don't know what big word I'm trying to think of, presence of a company and it's not by accident. I really wish it didn't bop though because the lyrics make me so unhappy and uncomfortable. Like there's something so hypnotic and like the relaxing, shh, we got this. It sounded great, but yeah, it's very hypnotic and I think that kind of bleeds into the message. <laughs> circle, here we have a circle. It's smooth and inoffensive. <laughs> yeah, we... Have I been tricked to stand circles this whole time? I'm a triangle boy. <laughs> 
Shout out to Zelda in the number three. There's something interesting about it too, where it's like, it's not only control over people, but it's this being or this company or this presence, someone promising to get a brand to that Coca-Cola, Disney, you know, like Nestle, g and &E, I guess Amazon now, but like those monolithic, we actually own like thousands of companies each. It makes me think of that. Like either we'll promise to get you to that level or we're the ones who created the, the 12 companies that run the entire world's money. You know what I mean? That gross reality of those companies seeing everybody as a product, that kind of cutting under the, the problematic elements of some of the people you're going to uh, appeal to. You know what I mean? Using this subject matter, but like under that like spooky lens, but like staying cold, focusing on these things and showing you kind of like the dirty reality of marketing but it also puts me in that existential dread of i'm part of the machine by making this video right now please like and subscribe <laughs> please <laughs> click those buttons and like especially targeting like marketing like that like it's it's scary it's interesting i wonder if an ad's gonna play in the middle of this I really like that song oh but the lulling quality like i feel manipulated freaking Oh, I'm never gonna say his last name right. That makes me feel so bad. Neil Cicerega? Cicerega? Mmm, I don't like that that was such a bop, but it was. <laughs> I really enjoyed the song. And then it terrified the crap out of me. Oh, jokes aside about liking, watching, sharing, subscribing. Rate five stars. Um, if this video does go well, I think I just found an episode I wanna do for my uh, holiday content. This is from Lemon Demon's I Am Become Christmas. Um, but next is Aurora Borealis. And I just need a minute to get steamed hams out of my brain. Specifically steamed ham set to feel good ink. Aurora Borealis. Ooh, this makes me think of like Undertale in the snow. Ooh, then everything else kicked in. Ooh, this rocks. Wait, what? What's happening? I mean, what isn't happening? Let's go to the graveyard and cover up darkness. However you want to celebrate your holiday. What happened to mankind? But also this slaps. This really does rock. Holy crap. It's like just the right amount of like drab for how I feel over the holidays. But like, it's still like has a great sound to it. The world's ending, but like, yeah. Baby, it's cold inside, don't leave me. Ooh, I get it. Nice play on that song. It's cold inside. Enjoy the moon rise and let it destroy us. Oh, it's, it's Christmas time in Majora's Mask. I'm stressed, but this rocks. Like, that's such a good hook. Like, I like this song a lot. Like, this is the kind of, like, holiday-themed song I want to make. I just had to share with someone. Ooh. Well, that last lyric was heartbreaking. Man, the energy of this ad does not match the energy of that song at all. <laughs> Join us this summer. Anyway. I really liked that. Yeah, let me know if you want me to do Lemon Demon's heckin' A holiday album. So when you say that the world is ending, are you saying like, we're ignoring the state of the world? Let's like use the holidays as a means to continue to like stay blissfully ignorant and unaware. Cause I mean, if this was recent then yeah. Yeah, see, I think I'm just getting the, the dates that this was uploaded. Cause this is saying 2019. I don't think that's right. I am become Christmas. Oh, nice. Man, that's really, it's really genuinely heartbreaking that I can apply something more modern to this, but okay, so this was released December 21st, 2012. Literally back when, you know, the, the it was the Mayan calendar, right? Said that the world was gonna end down to the point where we had like a movie about it. Was that what John Cusack driving a limo? I'm getting distracted. But I love the way it like rocked though. Like it had such like a morbid, kind of like melancholy kind of, I don't know, like emo synth? Is that a thing? I want to make that a thing. <laughs> Stay tuned for more updates on my emo 
emo synth album. Is this the first time that you've ever seen Aurora Borealis crush mankind? So you've seen it previously. So you've seen the warning signs. Have you seen the decline or the fall of man? Or you're not surprised by this because it gave you the sense of like the person that you're with is wanting to like take shelter or something. And you're just like, eh, let's just hang out. Like, what's the what's the point? Like I said, it had a very drab kind of feel to it, but I also really love it beneath apocalyptic snowflakes from above so like nuclear ash like fall like right is that fallout fallout new vegas right apocalypse snowflakes nuclear winter yeah we're not in peril we're in apocalypse that's interesting because yeah december 12 2012 that was supposed to be like a nat a natural disaster affecting the planet but you're talking about things that like we do so yeah both the collapse of society and the fall of man but also the death of the planet so i guess maybe it's the pov is not surprised and the person that they're speaking to or singing to in the story is still like free Freaking out, like, let's get canned food and water and let's head into the basement. And the POV is just like, yeah, of course this was gonna happen. Let's go enjoy the festivities, so to speak. Or does this take place during the apocalypse, I wonder? Like, it's already happened? The POV is saying, this is your first apocalypse, but my world already crashed down before this? I do like the play on Baby It's Cold Outside. I can barely see you now, but your smile is a frown. Yeah, I knew it had to stop, because I always mess it up. And I get it if you run, I just had to share with someone. Damn, yeah. Or maybe it's it's like literally happening right now, because I guess the if we start on the apocalypse, to snowflakes maybe it is someone like kind of panicking and not wanting to be alone right now or maybe even like the pov is just trying to make the most of it while like i said the other person's like we gotta go but i just had to share with someone just wanting someone with you at the end of the world wanting to still fight for a uh, a human connection with someone else despite the apocalypse happening around you. A flashlight underneath my chin. Like you're trying to scare them? Oh, maybe the POV's worried that they are scaring the person. But it's the apocalypse. Everyone's gonna be a little, a little, a little stressed, a little overwhelmed. It's like, I don't wanna scare you or I am scaring you, but I wanted to share what's left of what I have and what little time I have left with somebody. Oh, so maybe the chorus is like a joke, like, oh, so this is your first apocalypse, you know? Like maybe you're trying to help somebody like feel better or laugh it off and then it's like, I just wanted to share this time left with you. Even if the world is going to end, let me still try to be a comfort, make someone laugh, make s comfort someone, make them feel better. But also then the reality of it not working because it was like, you're not, you're not smiling, you're frowning. It's okay that it's not working, but like you're still gonna do your best. Crap, I really like Liked that. The more I think about the lyrics, the more it like resonates me on a more of a personal level than just a ooh song pop music in head go burr. It makes me start to like kind of appreciate the POV trying to comfort somebody, trying to joke and laugh off this horrible thing that you can't you can't do anything about it right this is just the situation that you're in crap i like that song even more after going through the lyrics am i allowed to say pog am i too old for that am i not a good enough gamer <laughs> and next is lifetime achievement award congratulations if this is about you winning one Ooh, hello Ooh, ooh those notes though it's like singing ghosts Oh no. Yeah, I think Katy Perry would be really scared and surprised, yes, if Michael Jackson suddenly came back. Ooh. Is this like about like that hologram bringing back dead celebrity thing? Or at least the exploitation elements of that, you know? Expletive elements? Is that what you would call that? Ooh. Last ride ever. Oh, it's spooky, but I like your voice when you're spooky. Ew. Not the music. That sounds great. What if it's about like hitting a level of stardom where your lifetime achievement award is you can't die. People will still use, manipulate your image, your work, your legacy will continue to be like manhandled essentially. Don't be nervous, baby. Ooh. Uh -huh. Ooh, that's good. Spooky synthy outro right there. This record in no way endorses a belief in the occult. 
I know that. Is that like a general disclaimer? How do I know that statement? Due to my strong personal conviction, convictions, I wish to stress that this record in no way endorses a belief in the occult. I feel like I've heard that before. Spooky as hell, though. I mean, this one's pretty direct, in my opinion, and not only the reality of your what, book, movie, show, YouTube video. There's a reality where that outlives you. You know, at least the physical stuff, at least now. Who knows what happens to my stuff when I die, and I don't want to think about it. My sisters will figure it out. Literally, your art lives after you're gone, but then also, like, people having control over your image. Because, like, I do remember it was the... God, what was it? It was Rogue One, right? There was, um... Yeah, it's the... You may have fire when ready. Tarkin. General Tarkin. I remember reading after that it happened that, like, celebrities were starting to put clauses in their contracts and stuff or having documents drafted saying... You can't use my likeness after I'm dead. Because technically, since that verbiage hasn't been expressly blocked in the past, technically, a company with a good enough legal team could do it without permission from the family. I don't think anyone has, but, like, it became a concern. And that's what's making me think of that. And like I said, the 3D, like, a projection of, like, a performance or something, right? It's freaky. Potentially positive stuff, too. Like, people still listening reading or ingesting your work, taking it in some way after your life, but also those negatives of like, you know, they can just bring you back, act like you never died, like you lose more of your uh, ownership of yourself after death. That's kind of my takeaway from it anyway. It's like kind of a morbid achievement. Congratulations, like you've become so big that like you, your entertainment presence will outlive your life. And there will be people who for good reasons or sinister ones continue that after you're gone. You don't really know what, what that person would have wanted or would have been okay with as technology starts to move forward. You were and still are famous and rich. Good for you, celebrity, but it's also like, it's kind of fucked. The, ooh, you look so alive. Like I was picturing like a talk show host where it's like, wow, isn't this neat? <laughs> I talked to Michael Jackson's ghost, not clickbait emotional. You know, like it kind of had that kind of vibe to it. Like people will roll with it or not speak up about it or not even know what's going on or understand the full scope of it. Like such a freaky, odd and very dark take and reality on a level of status or celebrity where it's like both a way to we want to preserve your legacy but also it can be a way of how can we make more money there is a positive element to be taken in here but also like the sinister undertones that can happen they loved your throat and quote unquote you yeah because it's kind of framed like they're bringing you back to life <laughs> wake me up wake me up inside can't wake up so yeah it kind of has a come like come on what what more can we squeeze out of you technology can be evil like and subscribe. <laughs> Unless this is about a different Bill Watterson. I'm assuming Calvin and Hobbes, Bill Watterson. If not, I'll cut all this out. But next is Bill Watterson from, uh, oh, I wrote it down, View Monster. Like Lady Gaga. And next is Bill Watterson. Where's the tiger now? Where's the yeah, okay, yeah, this is Calvin and Hobbes, Bill Watterson. Like, I was like 99% sure. Oh no, no, come on, Mr. Demon. He's a secretive, reclusive person. I brought shears to cut your phone line. Uh. You're the cat's me, uh, 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 oh. I do like that chorus, though. You're so great, you're so great. So I have questions about the characters. What happened to Hobbs? That's interesting. Don't fear me. Oh, he's, he's definitely afraid of that. <laughs> Yeah, this is getting, um, it's getting spooky stalkerish. Ooh, and it gets just a little more, like, the music gets a little more distorted and filtered. I'll shake your hand and kiss your feet. Mom, come pick me up. Only wanna try your face on. Run, Mr. Watterson, run, don't look back. Crap, that freaked me out. I appreciate the tone of like, intentionally like going too far to illustrate like literally the reasons why someone like Bill Watterson, um, who is notoriously reclusive, if you are also a fan of 
of Calvin and Hobbes and Bill Watterson and his work in general, you probably know this too. It's almost in a sense by making this character who like goes too far, it almost feels like outside of the song, writing and crafting it, it's supportive of there's other than just you wanting and you having the right to want to be left alone. There's also unfortunately reality where people will do these things. It's interesting to kind of like feel that tone. Like it's obviously, it it comes from a place of, of comedy and it's, it's going so far. God, just side by side like that. Don't you know I think you're the cat's meow? Where's the tiger now? Where's the tiger now? Like it's already illustrating the lack of boundaries from the the obsessed fan, you know? But yeah, it's that lack of care for the person that you do or claim to admire, you know, and taking it like several steps far. And it's like almost, like I said, supporting Bill Watterson's desires to be left alone. It's that interesting feeling too of like as a kid, I'm like, I want a Hobbs. Like I want, I want a stuffed tiger of my very own. And then like getting older and realizing like there's a reason why you never got that. And it's not because of your parents divorce and it's not because anyone didn't love you. Gifts aren't love, Bill, by the way, if we're time traveling right now. But like that reality from like as a kid going, just I just want a Hobbes toy. Please make it happen. And then as an adult going, oh, I feel that kind of a that kind of affection and appreciation here by illustrating the lack of boundaries in the pov and but yeah like it gets really scary you want me to show how much i believe and how far i'll go to meet you like all the way down to i just want to try your face on like good god it, that's frightening stuff like i said that callous hey i think you're great questions demands like tell me this 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 is this like where's the tiger like uh, that shift in it i think is like my favorite part of it because it's not even it doesn't even feel like a genuine care for this person you're claiming to admire. It's just straight up, tell me what this means. Like, (laughs) confirm this. Like, I have theories, read read my screenplay. Like, it has this like self-serving kind of feeling to it from that POV. And it's not framed as like, teehee, what a crazy. It's just like, yeah, some people can, it can be a lot sometimes. Or even like, when I read your comic strips, like I, I saw myself in between the lines. It's like, you know, even if someone just calmly and politely spells out how much your work means to you, like that can sometimes be a little overwhelming. Cause I don't know, I'm not picturing like a forum or a Q and A, I'm picturing like, getting groceries or a cup of coffee and someone being like, my my significant other left me and, and, and your comic strip, you know, saved me from the edge of oblivion. It's like, hey, hey, thank you, hope you're well. That intensity. It's interesting to think about and it's heartbreaking. All of these are interesting and heartbreaking, really. Almost like, hey, I kind of get why you're so private. So many people listen to your own work and stuff. Like, you know, I'm I'm sure somebody's been a little abrasive or, or rude, even if they are a fan. I definitely found it interesting. I like the way it sounded, but like it just started to like, st- it, it just, it stayed so stressful. There's a lot of his music I can, I can kind of listen to in a more like relaxed kind of this still bops and is like synthy spooky fun. This one was a little less fun, but it wasn't any less good. Does that make sense? I just want everyone to be safe. I want everyone to be okay. (laughs) Oh, really? You're a fan of Bill Watterson? Name three books. (laughs) <laughs> I love to make that joke, but the reality is someone has probably said that to somebody else and meant it. Speaking of obsessive statements and people, this is the song Lemon Demon wrote about me, Soft Fuzzy Man. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Oh my God, I'm joking. Have I graduated to Soft Fuzzy Man? I think I'm still just a soft fuzzy boy. Man's at like 200, 250K, you know? Let's not talk down about Bill, but let's, let's, stay, let's stay realistic. Stay humble, fam squad. That hurt. Ow, that really hurt my shoulder. (laughs) Anyway, we're closing out the night with Soft Fuzzy Man. Wait. Ooh, I liked that musically, but why do you seem so negative, shitty, aloof, but you're not? Why does it sound like kazoos? Not complaining, it just threw me off. Does it have to be a bop though? Ooh. Yeah, this doesn't sound fun. The lyrics, this is, the music sounds 
so fun. Again, this is one of those times where it's like, I love the way that this sounded, but like the more like the lyrics started creeping in again, it's like, first I was thinking like, yeah, like someone sensitive and tuned with who they are. Like I felt playful and fun, but then it started to feel like, can't you see me? Why can't you see me? I'm all around. And then comparing yourself to like, like a fog or a mist. Yeah, to waft over you and cloud up your view. That doesn't sound good. That's when you turn on your like, hazard lights then yeah don't be nervous no don't be nervous i'm not like the other guys i'm just gonna look at the lyrics sorry i'm reading quietly i should be filming a video <clears throat> uh cold and windy dark and stormy let me float your way oh it's interesting that we keep comparing ourselves to like weather elements but yeah dark and stormy cold and windy waft over you and cloud up your view if that's how you describe yourself i don't know are you trying to be like aloof or who you really are and you're trying to perceive yourself as like an upbeat because it would like it got really up like the soft fuzzy man like it, it felt a little more upbeat and fun but then it kind of went back to like you started to hear the static and like i said that like interesting it wasn't unpleasant but it almost felt like kazoos for a second the uh, instrument choices started to change so maybe it's someone wanting to perceive like yeah, i'm not like the other guys what you need is this don't go let the fog cover you i, I think it's about like a manipulative negative person trying to pretend to be either dark or trying to be soft fuzzy man. I don't know, maybe it's someone trying out different tactics. That makes sense. Like they're describing themselves as like dark and cloudy and then soft and fuzzy, dark and stormy. Sorry, like trying to kind of crap shoot your personality to see what's gonna stick with this person that you're attracted to for a while or for the evening. Changing like a storm, dark and stormy, but then like soft and fuzzy, like different ways like the weather can change. So maybe this person either does kind of change their uh, persona or different masks, I guess, masks of your own face, different ways of trying to uh, connect with someone either long-term or temporarily playing that like pickup kind of game instead of being genuine. Don't you understand me? Why don't you understand me but then the reality of like that fog that mist is like seeping in love the way it's presented and illustrated don't love the reality that was really fascinating i had another great time like again it's really fun there was no like two trucks moment but it's it's like just the right amount of like provocative and spooky but it's not like so overwhelming and i i really was saving this for when i just needed something to sink my teeth into that isn't gonna like really hurt me but i had a great time like like, man, your stuff is so interesting. I really want to, and I'm being so genuine. Views and likes and shares and stuff will also help me kind of gauge if people want that. Um, if you want me to do I Am Christmas, I Am Become Christmas. Yeah, uh, let me know if you guys want me to do that at the end of the year for the holidays. I think that would be really interesting. Aurora Borealis slapped. Like, all these songs are good, even if they aren't gonna go on, like, my day-to-day -day playlist. Like, they're still great. Like, Lifetime Achievement, I think, pumps me out too much and so does Bill Watterson but they're still good songs and it's always like really interesting stories or topics that you choose from to write about I'm really digging your stuff and I'm really having a good time and I hope you guys are too um but yeah uh there you guys go what did you guys think what do you think of the songs what do you think of my thoughts what are your takes on my takes uh something that I missed let me know in the comment section down below don't forget to like the video if you did subscribe if you want to support the channel and ring the bell so you're notified of more uploads check the settings set them to all blah 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 youtube words uh, i do have a gaming channel build show gaming i stream there when i can i do my best to do that mondays and thursdays that's linked in the description and don't forget in the description there is a link to a card with resources for social injustices in the world uh there's an issues in the world card black lives matter stopping asian hate resources trevor project mental health and crisis lines should you or someone you know need them um but yeah hope everyone's staying safe uh stay hydrated uh wear a mask if you choose to go out be mindful of others remember to take care of yourselves please